batch of transcripts have been released by the January 6th committee, along with two more of its interviews with former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. The new transcripts show Hutchinson and her lawyer, Stefan Pasatino, appeared to argue several times when she testified before the committee last May. In the new transcripts, Hutchinson claims she saw the House, the, the House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, burn documents in his office fireplace between December 2020 and January of last year. Meantime, the House of Representatives has officially kicked TikTok out. It's gone from all the House mobile devices. Lawmakers and staff members required to remove the video social media app from their electronic devices managed by the House. An internal notice describing TikTok as, quote, high risk to users due to its security risks, unquote, forcing them to uninstall the app. The government is expected to ban TikTok from all devices soon. It is waiting to review in a $1.7 trillion government funding bill that is waiting for President Biden's signature. Chinese officials are responding to the U.S. for possible COVID restrictions on people traveling from China. Today, U.S. officials cited a rise in COVID cases in China and, quote, lack of transparent data. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson responded that any measures the U.S. take should be scientific and moderate. The spokesman said all parties should cooperate to ensure the safe movement of people between countries and the stability of the global supply chain. According to one U.S. official, a decision about a possible testing requirement could come soon. A Russian opposition leader posting a series of tweets saying he is being injected with an unknown drug in prison. His name is Alexei Navalny. He says he suffers from spinal problems and prison conditions have made that worse. Navalny claiming he asked about the injection he was getting and was told it was just vitamins, but he thinks otherwise, adding that the injections are not working. Pope Francis announced that his predecessor, Pope Benedict, the 95 year old who resigned from the post nine years ago is quote, very sick after a decline in health. The 2013 Pope Benedict XVI shocked the world by making an almost unprecedented decision to resign from his position, citing advanced age. Benedict's announcement marked the first time a pope had stepped down in nearly 600 years. The Southwest Airlines problems continue as another 2,500 flights canceled today. Southwest admits the issue won't be resolved until the next few days. The U.S. Transportation Department calling this a complete meltdown of the system. ABC's Alexis Christophorus explains how the airline is struggling to recover after that massive winter storm. I'm telling you, it was a long trip. Yes. Oh my God, 25 hours. Southwest Airlines trying to make good after a major meltdown, chartering this bus from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Houston. Oh, I hate Southwest, I hate them. I'm still stranded. I need to drive nine more hours. My feet are swollen. I'm upset. I'm stressed. I'm tired. And I hate them. Since Monday, Southwest has canceled more than 8,000 flights, even as other airlines have recovered from the massive Christmas weekend storm, leaving thousands of passengers stranded. We were on the plane for about three hours before they deplaned us and canceled our flight. And then um, our next available flight is December 30th. Officials saying the problems go beyond weather, including staffing issues, outdated IT infrastructure, and the airline's point-to-point -point flight system, making it more vulnerable to widespread problems when issues arise. The hub and spoke system used by most other major carriers helps isolate problems. I'm truly sorry. Two days into the mass cancellations, an apology from Southwest CEO. Our plan for the next few days is to fly a reduced schedule and reposition our people and planes, and we're making headway. U.S. Transportation yes, Secretary you know, Pete Buttigieg calling around. the meltdown unacceptable and vowing to hold the airline accountable. We are past the point where they could say that uh, this is a weather-driven issue. What this indicates is a system failure. A Southwest spokesperson telling affected passengers that they should keep all hotel, car rental and meal receipts, promising to reimburse them for expenses incurred because of the record delays and mass cancellations. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. A woman in Buffalo, New York being called a true hero after that deadly blizzard over Christmas weekend. Shakira Autry found a man outside her house suffering from frostbite. And after hearing his screams for help, her boyfriend helped carry the man 
inside on the morning of Christmas Eve. His name is Joey White. He was rescued by the two and his family says he may have gotten scared during the blizzard when he was trying to walk home. The mother of three, total stranger, took him in. He ple pleaded for help with phone calls on Facebook Live as well. She was trying to get Joey to the hospital to treat his severe frostbite on his hands. And then on Christmas Day, Good Samaritan showed up in a vehicle that could make it through the snow and Joey got to the hospital. This man could have died, 64 years old, could have died outside. I wasn't letting that happen on my watch and he wasn't going to die in front of my kids. This woman um, did something that an angel would do, okay, um, to take in a perfectly stranger, a stranger. You took him in, in your home on Christmas Eve. Incredible generosity. Joey's severe frostbite being treated at the ICU burn unit at that hospital, but overall, He's in stable condition. Heroes are born out of those extreme weather events, aren't they? Yes, they are. And look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. I think we're to the beautiful state. If you got stranded, this is a good place to get yep. stranded. That's true. Yes, hardly a cloud in the sky. Plenty of blue out there when we look outside with live cam. Of course, that sunshine with us this afternoon, but that means that temperatures continue to warm. So after starting off slightly above freezing across a good portion of South Central Texas earlier this morning, let's take a look at some of those lunchtime temperatures you can see in the 60s already across a good portion of the area. 65 is that lunchtime temperature here in San Antonio officially. 68 up in Comfort, 66 in Rio Medina, 67 on the south side of Bear County over at Stinson. There's that sunshine that is with us this afternoon. Check out these high temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s. And if you're stepping out for any evening plans, we'll see those temperatures fall into the 60s after the sun goes down. Again, could be a little breezy at times. Winds are now back in from the south. Some gusts upwards of 20 to 25 miles per hour certainly possible throughout the remainder of this Wednesday, helping that humidity work back in. So if you like the sunshine, soak it up today because tomorrow's going to look a bit different. The cloud cover returns also will feel more muggy when you do step outside in the morning. Some areas of patchy fog and drizzle could greet you for the morning drive and then maybe that isolated shower activity mainly east of town into the early afternoon afternoon. You can see though in the days leading up to the new year, not really going to need that big puffy coat in the morning. We'll start off in the 50s with so still a slight chill in the air and then temperatures warmer than average in the afternoon in the 70s. We'll have another full look at what to expect in the days leading up to New Year's Day in just a few guys. Thank, Thank you. Yep. With the new year right around the corner, being healthy is one goal you might have for yourself in 2023. Mandy Gaither with CNN describing what you can do to keep your body and heart working to make your health a priority. Before you ring in 2023, set yourself up for success in the new year by focusing on your health now. Instead of one big change, start with the basics. January 17th is the average day that the American breaks their New Year's resolutions. So make small steps, make small changes that are sustainable. Dr. Stephen Kopetsky with Mayo Clinic says next on your year-end health checklist should be to schedule wellness visits with your primary care provider. Check on your blood pressure, cholesterol, and if at risk, get screened for diabetes. Routine screenings for cancers are also key to maintaining good health. And arm yourself with knowledge by making your health a part-time job. You get a blood pressure cuff at home, you have it linked to your iPhone or your smartphone, so it'll uh, record the pressures. Uh, know your medicines, keep a list on your smartphone, know what they are, why you take them, what, they're, what the side effects are. Kopetsky says to pick a day or week to focus on a healthy habit so it's not overwhelming. What's important, How what you eat. Next is how much activity you have, physical activity. Next is your sleep. That's one of the forgotten risk factors. And finally, get vaccinated. It's not too late to get a flu shot or updated COVID-19 booster if you're eligible. Kopetsky says this can actually reduce your risk of cardiovascular problems. When we get the flu or we get COVID, we get a lot of inflammation in our body, and that then leads to problems with the lining of our arteries where they start to block up and have blood clots which can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither.
Still ahead, we're going to look at this year's Times Square ball drop design and learn about the meaning behind it for 2023. We suspected it, COVID impacting our lives in different ways, how it has changed the way that children learn. Next. The studies are coming out now. Coronavirus impacted more than just our health and our finances. The effect is seen on our children's education. The studies show that ACT test scores dropped to their lowest point in 30 years. Nancy Alvarez shows us just how important it is to continue educating our children during the holiday break. It's all about the ABCs and 123s, but it seems that COVID put the brakes on our kids' brains. A new report from the National Center of Education reveals the first score decline in reading since 1990 and the first ever score decline in math. That's why it's imperative to keep kids learning all year round. First, explore opportunities to learn online. And we don't have to shy away from it because you do have to find different apps that you can use to further um, your kids' interests. Some of the top-rated educational apps for elementary school-age kids, ABC Mouse, Khan Academy, Epic, and Quick Math Junior. Many podcasts include extra learning materials. Some of the most popular are Radio Labs Terrestrials, But Why, a podcast for curious kids, and Tumble. But not all learning needs to be high-tech. Studies show that reading with your child six to seven days a week has the effect as being 12 months older. Number three, get out and about. Join nature groups, science centers, and your local library. Facebook can connect parents and kids to specialty groups in your area focused on everything from robotics to languages. And also, don't forget, give them time to be a kid and to play outside. With ways to keep growing and learning outside of the classroom, I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Taking a live look outside with live cam, not a cloud in the sky, temperatures almost at 70 degrees. Here we are at 1244 in the afternoon. Exactly. Nice. After several days of just colder than average temperatures, we are seeing that warming trend really take hold today. It was a colder than average start to the day, but above freezing for a good portion of the area. We started off at 37. The average low for this time of year is 41. So far officially over at the airport to high of 65, but of course we still do have several hours of heating to go this afternoon. So already above average for that daytime high. Those temperatures will continue to warm as we get ready to ring in the new year. Year, heading into the upcoming holiday weekend. We'll have another full look at that and what to expect in just a few. What a great time to be down on the river. Oh, yeah. At the golf course, just outside anywhere doing I'm something. I'm now realizing I maybe shouldn't have, you know, come back to work today <laughs> for the long holiday. Should have taken one more day. Wow, because so pretty out there. It is stunning. We've got beautiful sunshine, and it's actually comfortable to step out to because it's just not so, so cold out there. And, of course, that is all thanks to the warming trend that we have really seen kind of take effect today, especially this morning, while it was still plenty cold out there. You did need to bundle up stepping out the door. For most of us, those morning lows were above freezing. Let's take a look at those. 37 degrees was the low officially here in town. 37 was that wake up temperature over in Uvalde. 41 in Rock Springs. Carrizo Springs briefly touched that 32 degree mark, but that was pretty much it. And really, as we head into the next couple of days leading up to New Year's Eve, leading up to New Year's Day as well. Those morning lows more so in the 50s compared to the 30s and even the 20s and teens that we saw last weekend. We had six consecutive days here in San Antonio with temperatures at or below freezing after last Thursday's Arctic cold front moved through the area. Most of these temperatures occurred very early in the morning, but yes, this morning, the first of many that we have finally were able to see those lows above that 32 degree threshold. Plenty of sunshine out there right 
now. Yes, it is an absolutely beautiful day to step out to. Sunglasses, though, definitely needed. That sunshine helping those temperatures warm. Again, 65 right now over at the airport. Pleasanton, though, already checking in at 72 degrees. It's 70 in Carrizo Springs. Del Rio, still a little bit cooler, just shy of 60 here this lunchtime hour. 67 in Kerrville and 68 in New Braunfels. We've been talking about those breezy south winds. You can see Gonzales clocking in a wind gust now upwards of about 23 miles per hour. It gets a little breezier the farther down closer to the coast that you go near Corpus Christi, Beeville, even stretching over to Victoria. Here in San Antonio and surrounding areas, some wind gusts upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour certainly possible. A little breezy at times. Again, temperatures warming into the low 70s here in town over the next couple of hours. And then after we see the sun goes down, those temperatures fall into the 60s and then eventually into the 50s later tonight around 59 by 9 p.m. In terms of your daytime highs, upper 60s, low 70s, so a bit warmer than where we were yesterday afternoon and the afternoon before that, around 73 here in San Antonio, just shy of 70 in some spots up in the hill country. But again, with that breezy south wind, what we'll also find is more of that Gulf moisture and humidity working its way back into the area. So taking a look at our dew points, how we measure that low level moisture here in the atmosphere, those are expected to rise throughout the afternoon and even more so tonight. And where you'll really notice that is tomorrow morning. Not a bad idea to plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time out the door. Some areas of fog, some of which could be dense as well as some drizzle certainly possible in the morning as well and then into the early afternoon there's that area of low pressure off to our west that could spark up a few isolated showers mainly east of san antonio we'll dry things out though heading into the upcoming new year's eve weekend for any plans that you may have still a little bit of a chill in here in the mornings but nothing like what we've seen over the past several days starting off near about 50 and then we'll see more sunshine especially on on Saturday, those temperatures climbing into the mid to maybe even a few upper 70s before our next front tries to move in early next week, guys. Really nice. Thank you. We're days away from the new year. Final preparations, go, uh, they're underway in New York for the big night. What millions will gonna, are going to have their eyes on this weekend and what makes this thing shine? Times Square preparing for Saturday night's big event. This year's design for the ball drop is the gift of love. Zania Maldonado tells us more about the big night that millions are going to be watching. Whether in person. The first goal is try to get as close as possible to the ball, ball drop. Or at home. We're prob probably going to cast the ball drop on the TV. Millions will be watching this massive 12,000 pound crystal ball dropping right here in Times Square come New Year's Eve. She's going to get to see the ball drop. Uh, only 10 years old, so that's kind of a win for her. A um, little bit of champagne, that's it. <laughs> Now the crystal ball features 2,688 triangles to be exact, and this year they're replacing 192 of those with the new design, Gift of Love. A circle of overlapping hearts intertwined together. Crews working throughout the afternoon today to place the message of love on the iconic ball, which stands 12 feet tall. Every year we bring a different message, you know, gift of peace, gift of love, gift of friendship, but I think love is so important, not only for our, you know, friends, family, our loved ones, but for the whole world. Kickoff Saturday will be about 6 p.m. when the ball is raised to the top of its pole above one Times Square. With no official COVID requirements announced, this year's celebration different from last year when only 15,000 people were allowed to attend. And a far cry from 2020 when the ball dropped for the first time ever in front of an empty Times Square. Organizers share they hope the message of this year's theme hits home not only for the thousands that will be celebrating in person, but also for those watching across the country. With that act of love and that gift of love, I think we as people, we can be better. And what they say, like put on your mask first before you take care of somebody else. So if you've got that foundation, you become a better person to help everybody around you. I think the world could use a little more love, don't you? Always. SA Live has taken us back to some of its favorite moments of 2022 this week, the ones they loved the best. The Hallow Witch Show is definitely one of them. 
Mike and Fiona, tell us what's brewing today. Happy Halloween, everyone. So a strange thing happened earlier today. We found this uh, black candle in the SA Live office, and uh, when we lit it, this kind of black flame appeared. And then this started happening, and yeah. we all started feeling a little bit funny. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, so it's probably going to be an interesting day, yes, uh, but, you know, we can guarantee it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Yes, there's going to be lots of magic as well, because a local magician a, came in he pulled out all the stops. He left us speechless and a little frightened with one trick, and I seriously thought I was going to hurt him. You have to see how he mixes magic and scares us with Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, are you getting ready for your spooky parties tonight? We've got some great quick and easy treats and decoration ideas. It's all using things you probably already have around the house, which is perfect since we are hours away from trick-or-treating, you know, so just boo it yourself. Hey! hey! <laughs> She'll be here the rest of the week, folks. And do you want to become an expert potion maker? We're mixing up concoctions for grown-ups and kids that look and sounds more like magic than just something to sip on that's tasty. And we have a real fortune teller. All right, soak up the sunshine today because tomorrow we'll see more of the cloud cover move back in. Temperatures already in the upper 60s and low 70s here in San Antonio, 67 over at SA International, 71 at Stinson, as well as Randolph over there on the east side of Bear County. Again, we'll hold on to that sunshine this afternoon. Those temperatures continue to warm. Upper 60s, low 70s for those daytime highs. We'll see those temperatures fall into the 60s after the sun goes down and it will be a little breezy out there and then you'll really notice that humidity that that south breeze is pumping back into the area tomorrow morning. Not a bad idea to give yourself a little bit of extra time out the door because we could find some areas of fog and some drizzle out there tomorrow again with the cloud cover. But then as we see just a slight break in the humidity this weekend, still warmer than average temperatures, but more sunshine, especially by New Year's Eve. I hope you're off this afternoon to go get you some sunshine. Yes, going to go soak it up. All right. Yes. Holiday week. Halloween, Christmas, New Year's. It's it is holiday. the best of SA Live, and it starts right now.